Jesus. <laughs> Bubbles. Buttholes. <laughs> buttholes. Yes. Oh no. The buttholes. Yes. Not yet. Soon. Soon. Yes. Can, can I tell a joke hearing, real quick? Buttholes. They're hearing every. They're hearing. You're they're hearing. <laughs> we can be heard. Soon. Okay. Soon. Well, now that you heard that Good we're job. here, Good hi, job. everybody. They're hearing every. Somebody they're has their hearing. YouTube going, and I'm hearing it. Mute okay. your YouTube. There you go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gray 17 of Babylon 5 Podcast, part of the Front Row Network and NPR Illinois Community Voices. We're a group of first ones watching Babylon 5 for the umpteenth time and a group of newbies watching B5 for the first time. And we are here to talk about season four. We wrapped up season four a couple weeks ago. And first, I want to thank everybody for no one burned our houses down for missing a week. I really do appreciate, uh, you know, we've, we've done really well about getting these things out here week after week. We haven't missed a week yet. And then just, you know, schedule happened. The sun was covered by the moon and things like that. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed the Maggie Egan Cummins um, interview we did uh, that we released last week. If you didn't watch that interview, I recommend you do because she's an amazing person. And actually, we've got another interview. If you're on our social medias, you already know about it. That'll be coming here in, in the next week or two. I got to do my taxes first, though, so I'm going to do that, then I'll edit it. But uh, I'm Scott, and with me is, and I didn't make a list, so just somebody say it. Jesse. Emily. Nicole. <laughs> Kevin. Mike. Justin. <laughs> Yo, mama. <laughs> Dave. Groucho. <laughs> Jorge. And his sister, Tim. I don't know. Chinchilla. <laughs> oh, God. Monkey man bartender. <laughs> God, we have problems. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah, I miss that guy. Which guy? Monkey Man Bartender? Yeah. Yes. Oh. I miss Keffer. <laughs> oh. If anyone has uh, the actor who played Keffer's, I forgot his name right now, the actor who played Keffer's uh, contact info, I will get him on the show. I, it, it, I dogged certain people for a year before they got on, and we finally got him. Uh... See. So In other news, we here. may be having some restraining orders by the end of this show for all of the stalking Scott has done of cast members. Hey, so <laughs> far it worked. So far it worked. Hey, Sean. He says, long-time listener, first-time caller, and first one. The podcast is a weekly respite from the BS of the world. You guys do great. Thanks, Sean. The check's in the mail. We appreciate it, buddy. So hey, we're here to talk about... Hey, <laughs> Jesse. Jesse's got the wine, and she's already saying hi to Ryan. All is well. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> so we are here to talk season four, and uh, as you all know who've seen our lives before, it usually falls apart about ten minutes in. So the fact that we have audio right now, we're doing pretty damn good. We're going to talk about the season as a whole. We're going to get our final impressions on season four. We're going to talk about... Uh, the episodes, and we're going to do a, a bracket to see how our guys rank these episodes and see what our favorite episode is. And then we're going to just uh, talk more about uh, what's going on. We're going to talk about our predictions for season five, the final season of the show. And Ryan, thank you. You're always an adult. <laughs> You're always an adult, Ryan. Damn you, Ryan. And then Sean says, I'll get off my ass for a five-star review. Well, we appreciate that, Sean. We actually haven't had one in about a week, so anyone who hasn't done a five-star review, send, go over to Apple, take five minutes, and if you don't know your Apple ID, sign over your house and a mortgage, and then you'll get your Apple ID because they're assholes, and then you, you do your review. It doesn't um, have to be five-star either. You can be honest. It's okay. We did get a, we hey, a one-star recently. Yes. We're a five-star crew, okay? I want them to do five stars. <laughs> Maybe three. Maybe three. Can we just talk about my wine or wine comment that Mr. Robert Duven just made sir it's juice first of all and i don't whine i bitch at people and i yell at them <laughs> so there's a difference get it right we can all attest to that <laughs> get that lady some cheese <laughs> i actually wouldn't mind some cheese right now to be honest right ryan says his prediction is that season five will be emily's favorite season oh god and he spelled it favorite like you know somebody not american would spell it 
I noticed that too. <laughs> I was like, oh, the favorite with the U. Favorite, favorite. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive in, guys. And the first thing we always do with these things is we talk about our first impressions. But I think this is going to be, you know, our final impressions for season four as we move on. So we'll go to our newbies first and get their final impressions on what they felt about season four, what was good, what was bad, what was ugly. And uh, since she loved it the most and she enjoyed herself so much during season <laughs> four, let's go to Emily first. Your impressions on season four, Emily. Uh, let's say I tried to rewatch it so I'd be up to date for this episode and I didn't make it past episode eight. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And the heart... The bad thing is, I feel like the storyline was fine, but somehow none of it, it all fell flat for me. So yeah, me and season four were not good friends. We're on very shaky ground. I just hope season five is better. Otherwise, it's going to be a long road to October. We were discussing before we went live, uh, we were talking about something that happened in one of the season four episodes. And Emily's like, oh, I must have missed that one. No, you didn't miss that one. You just weren't paying attention. At all. <laughs> it happens. She was either shopping, reading, or playing a game. Maybe dueling. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's Is go it over dueling to, or uh, doodling? It could be dueling. I think we could get a good playing uh, some Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> my uh, my uh, kids are now into um, Lorcana, the Disney card game. I've already. Oh, good luck with that card game. crack. Oh, man, I've already spent way too much money on Lorcana. But okay, let's go to Justin next. Your impressions on season four. I mean, I thought it was good shit. I liked it. You know, a lot of stuff in there that tickled all my naughty bits. You know, you had Space <laughs> War. You had um, you had a lot of the conspiracies and the plot to finally take down the Clark regime, which is something I thoroughly enjoyed watching. Sheridan's, Sheridan's Messiah storyline kind of got on my nerves every now and then, but... I thought, you know, Londo's storyline, Jakar's storyline were some of my favorites. I mean, how can you not love those two whenever they're on screen? But I, I, I'm I, the opposite train of um, Emily. Um, I just question her taste in matters like this. But I thought it was really well done. You know, love you, Emily. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I really don't have too many bad things. Yeah, there's some shitty episodes every now and then. But really, I didn't. I, I didn't hate it. Ryan knows you well from Yum Yum, by the way. He says, season four had fascism, so Justin's a big fan. <laughs> uh, you're not a fan of fascism per se, but a fan of watching it fall to pieces. Exactly. Also, we got from Robert, it didn't suck. And from a Trojan, I didn't hate it. So they know us all yeah. really well. We can tell that these guys do listen to the show. <laughs> Let's They're go the real fans. The... Exactly. Let's go over to Nicole. Um, I enjoyed season four. Uh, I thought there was a lot of things that happened. Um, you know, JMS gave us some answers to some questions. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It made me mad. If you can do all those things, then I feel like that's a quality television show. So um, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, you know, the whole uh, people have brought up the Sheridan Messiah thing. The thing that about that whole thing i don't think it was him thinking he was a messiah it was just people treating him that way so i don't think he had a big head i just think it was the people surrounding him so i, I agree it, with you nicole it didn't yeah, really it, just... it didn't bother me that much because i didn't think it was coming from him you know what i mean um but i can see how it would be annoying because you're like oh shut the fuck up already these people you know um, but overall, I just, you know, obviously I'm a sucker for love. So there was a lot of love. There was a wedding, there was death. I mean, there was everything. So I feel like you have to check all those boxes and really to make the audience feel something. And I think that's what I like so much about this show is that it evokes actual emotions and physical responses from me, you know, um, whether it's anger or it's tears or it's me going, Oh my God, yelling at the computer when I watch it. So, um, for that, I really enjoyed it. And, um, you know, again, half the time, I don't know what the hell I'm doing or what the hell is happening because I don't know sci-fi, but I think I can follow it for the most part. And uh, I enjoyed it. 
Giga says, there are bad episodes every now and then. Is the story a bad one? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yum yum, Ryan. No, you know I hated the Garibaldi arc. That pissed me off big time. <laughs> and then Robert, of course, remember Marcus! <laughs> remember. Don't make me cry again. Jesse, what do you got? <laughs> good show, good show, good job. <laughs> It was, it was, you know, actually, to tell you the truth, <clears throat> I think that this was probably one of my favorite seasons. Um, it was just holy hell long. Like, I, I did a rewatch and I forgot that the shadows were this, still this season. Like, it's been so long. Like, I, <laughs> we were on like, what is it, like episode six or seven that the shadows like resolve? And my husband goes, oh, is this the season, you know, finale? No, we're not even close to halfway, let alone like the end. Um, but I actually did. I enjoyed it. I, I definitely enjoyed it more than season one, like a lot more. Um, it was a lot more episodes that was just actually like kept me engaged and kept me excited. And like, like Nicole said, there was a lot of shit. I had no idea. I still have no idea what's going on most of the time. I just like, listen to you guys explain why things are the way that they are. And otherwise, I mean, I had a good time. Kevin says us talking about B5 is more important than criminal minds. So I appreciate that, Kevin. Hey, wow. That's more important than Shamar Moore and his perfect eyebrows. <laughs> That's pushing it. I mean, he, he does have good eyebrows. Thanks for eyebrows. the compliment, but um, those, oh. Anywho. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, now Before you know you how know. I feel when you talk about search. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, Jesse and I honestly are, are newbies uh, to sci-fi, so half the time we just look cute and don't know what's happening. <laughs> so that's so Basically, it is. <laughs> I just smile and act like I know what's happening. Before we move over to our first ones for their impressions, uh, I did see uh, Sean asks, have you guys considered having a G17 host bracket at the end of B5? Find out which G17 hosts the podcast as it uh, wins the podcast. Do you already see how much therapy all of these people need? <laughs> that means seven out of eight of us will need more therapy. You don't want that to happen. You don't. I feel like we did that too, like the very first live, and somebody got their feelings hurt. So, <laughs> and there are a few of us now that we're in season one. So. <laughs> you know, also, I, I don't want everyone else to be upset when everyone says I'm their favorite. So let's just, you know, <laughs> and, and let's be honest, we know we all know what's going to happen. Brand's going to win in the end. Oh God, <laughs> that Kevin reference I now... did get. <laughs> Kevin in the chat is now telling me I didn't read his whole comment. So Kevin, I'll read your whole comment. Hold on. I love you guys so much, and I'm watching this while ha half paying attention to a Criminal Minds binge with my offspring. Talking about the writing on B5 is light years beyond the writing on CM, Criminal Minds. Okay, I read it all, Kevin. You good now? Thank you, okay. Kevin. Hi, offspring of Kevin. Hi. Hi. Okay, it's great that you're only half paying attention, because that's all all of us do anyway. So <laughs> This is true. I'm shopping true. for shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Without pants. You're pulling an Emily. What oh, kind of yeah. shoes? Are they running shoes? No, they're dress shoes. Emily, what happens? Joey, Emily Joey is just waiting for the Golden Girls spinoff podcast. Um, Once this is over, we're going to get that figured out. It's going to happen. Sean says, look, I contribute $5 to Patreon. You can afford some Lucy Van Pelt psycho psychiatric help with that. Yeah, we've already said that the Patreon money does go to our therapy. It's fine. Okay, let's go over to the uh, first kind ones. Of therapy. Exactly. The first ones who have watched the entire show. Uh, and the first one continues to claim he doesn't remember most of it. But we'll go to Mike first. Your impressions <laughs> on season four. You are <laughs> correct. Uh, boy, I got to I gotta echo, I forgot who said it earlier, but like I, I am no longer cut out for these like 20 plus episode seasons because I also <laughs> basically forgot that like Cartesia was still in the season. Um. <clears throat> I, looking back through the the synopsis, I, overall it's it's a good season. It's packed to the gills, wall to wall, with a lot of of great uh, segments. Some of which are more interesting to me than others. The Earth Civil War, I thought I was going to be more down on than it turns out that I really was. Um, the thing I did miss about 
about this season is I did actually miss that there were no, I'm going to get in trouble for saying bottle episodes, but I'm going to say it anyway, <laughs> uh, because some of the bottle episodes are some of the best ones. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that TNG Star Trek style. Every once in a while you get like a single one-off deeply philosophical episode and we didn't get like any of those in season four. Uh, at least that I'm remembering at the moment. Talk to me again in four hours when we get to our bracket. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and and it was a little bit light on the uh, quote-unquote big old space mysteries that I dig so much, because at this point, I think we pretty well knew uh, going into season four what was what and, and how it was going to play out. Um, but uh, again, I, all of that said, it's it's still solid. It's, it's, better, it's better TV now than most of what you get in in the current uh year so overall Mike, it's interesting oh go ahead no that's that's it i was gonna say it's interesting you bring that up with the whole there's no more you know single use episodes uh because we're all used to like streaming where there's eight to ten episodes now mm-hmm. i think of discovery which i actually enjoy especially the past uh three seasons but they try so hard to make it hundred percent serialized because there's only 10 episodes. So I'm just like, Oh, can I just have an episode where I can use, learn the bridge crew name, please. Well, not so, only that, but most of the time they're not telling even an eight episode story. And so I feel like they've stretched like really shitty taffy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, but uh, like I said, uh, B5 is, is still one of the best written series uh, in my opinion, uh, overall, and and season four from start to finish is is solid, and you know, let's go over to Kevin. Impressions on season four. Season four is good. Um, you know the the Jakar and Londo stuff is good. Um, I like liked Veer's involvement with that stuff. Uh, Cartesia. Um, yeah, the the stuff with Captain Sheridan does does drag some so does the garibaldi stuff i think i think that went on a little too long um and it was a little tough to watch at times but um you know solid uh season i like the mars stuff particularly the mars stuff with uh dr franklin and marcus um you know these two seasons are are my favorite and a big part of that is marcus's involvement uh in the seasons um, but I still think I like season three more than season four, but, uh, I think season four is my second favorite. Um, it is solid. There's not a lot of clunker episodes in this one. Um, a couple, but not, not a huge amount. Um, yeah, I, uh, this is a, this is a solid part of the show. It definitely has, uh, great writing in most respects. Uh, the acting is especially from the main cast is always solid. Um, and, uh, you know, the production value seemed to, if not go up, you know, stay pretty, pretty steady for this season. So, um, the, the sets look great and the, the wardrobe looks good. So yeah, uh, great up or, uh, I'm sorry, great season. Blake. I, I kind of agree with Kevin here. Shocking for most, I know that I probably like season three a little bit better, <clears throat> but overall, I like season four, especially the earlier episodes in season four. I do think towards the end there there are some issues with a little bit of the pacing and a few of the pieces towards the end of the season. But overall, I think it's a solid season. I like the story arc. I like the pieces that it wraps up in the story, and honestly, I think some of my favorite episodes in the series are in this season even if I think maybe season three on the whole was a little stronger than season four. Yeah. And I, I came into the season saying season four is my favorite season. I still think that's the case. I do think it didn't hold up as much as I thought it would. I still had, as everyone knows, issues with Sheridan, especially the first half of the season. Um, but in the full arc of everything, I still think it wraps up really nice. You got the shadow war, ends with and i and i know this divided folks as well too but i like how the shadow war ended i like how the civil war on earth ends and i i i still say deconstruction's a great way to end a show if that's going to be the way you're going to end a show kevin's wrong and it's fine uh so but it's one of those where i think in the in the grand scheme of things there's not too many episodes that i would not rewatch over and over again 
Uh, somebody asked about the definition of bottle episodes, and they mentioned intersection. It was uh, Stuart. Bottle episode, what about intersections in uh, real time? Isn't that part of a main story but fills the definition? Yeah, so there's somebody on our Discord who's already going to yell at Mike for bringing up bottle episodes again because we always get the definition wrong. But at the end of the day, I think that every single episode really does build into the next one, and I do enjoy that a lot. Um, so it's, uh, it's still my favorite season. I'm actually really interested <laughs> to see how season five goes, uh, and we'll talk more about that after we're done with this live. So, uh, let's see what else we got here in the chat while we're going. Um, yeah, good storytelling can embed character development into the plot. I agree, Joey, on that. Uh, and then, of course, Spade has to hop in and say, hey, hey, hey. Hey, Spade. <laughs> so, let's, uh, we're going to get into our discussion on the episodes with our bracket. But first, we have some uh, little intermissions. And the first intermission, I do believe, is going to be from Blake. He has some toys to show off. So one thing with the B5 community is there's definitely some creative people out there, some fans that, in an absence of merch, I mean, Star Trek, Star Wars, all these have a lot of merch. B5 uh, trying to get different things is a little bit of a challenge. So there's some very creative fans out there making pieces. Uh, this is one of them. This is a PPG that was uh, 3D printed, hand painted, and put together. Uh, looks fantastic, by the way. It also came with a link uh, stand that's in the shape of the Earth Alliance logo. Oh, Scott put me full screen, so we'll... Yeah, I want to see awesome. it. It's pretty. So, yeah, and I will say, Joseph Keneally is the fan who did these. Uh, he's pretty active in our discussion group as well as several other uh, online Babylon 5 groups. So, uh, great work by Joseph. It actually, it does not feel like it's 3D printed. I mean, it actually has a substantial amount of weight to it and feels decent. So, I mean, the fans out there that are making the different props and pieces, uh, there's ones out there that are doing ships, uh, station models, uh, other stuff. So I will say if you are looking for people that can produce these things, check out the Babylon five groups, because there are people out there now creating uh, the items that just aren't available commercially through outlets, like with star Wars or other uh, franchises. Send me the link for that, Blake, because I, for one, will be ordering one of those PPGs. Steve, says, can it be re info. Steve says, can it be reloaded? Question mark. <laughs> Joey says, I have one, but it's not painted or put together. So you have several pieces of plastic, Joey. <laughs> we're almost there. We're almost there. Getting there. Uh, well, speaking of which, with a couple uh, of the uh, power caps. So, I mean, there are pieces to it. Mm. Speaking of which, Scott, how's your Babylon 5 model coming along? Uh, it's still in the box over here. <laughs> so you, you, you also have pieces of plastic. Nice. I, I know. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh definitely something i'm working on uh maybe sometime this year we'll see we'll see but uh this uh yeah it's it's in the box over there it's it's right there i nabbed it off ebay for a good price so the other thing that we wanted to talk about with you all is we have a couple different giveaways that we're going to start and i really want to take a moment to thank a certain person who was able to make this happen for that uh, and this is uh, what happened was we got a whole we got uh, contacted by Billy Davis and uh, Billy is a big B5 fan been that way for years and he had a couple of different things that he had that he wanted to go to uh, some fans who would enjoy it and this stuff man it brings me back so we've got two different things first off we've got the Babylon 5 arcade series entertainment utility the shadow wars this is a windows 95 cd-rom still in the box not saran or uh, uh, shrink sealed but you know it's still in the box and oh by the way just in case you want to know can my computer handle this this requires uh, a computer running either uh, 486 and 33 running windows 95 or 3.1 uh, it requires eight megabytes of ram a 2x cd-rom drive and Super VGA monitor with at least 640 by 480 with 256 colors. Oh, and a sound card, too. You will need a sound card. So this is the first one we have. This is awesome. And then the second one we have, another CD-ROM. This one is the B5 official guide. Again, on Windows 95 CD-ROM. And it comes with a bonus the best of B5 enhanced music CD. 
I haven't opened this yet, uh, but I'm assuming all of it's still in there. And again, this one here, uh, this one you need, you need a Pentium 90, guys, uh, with 16 megs of RAM. Oh, and it says you need a mouse. It actually says you do need a mouse. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's monitor's still the same though. If you got a 640 by 480, you're set. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're going to give each of these away for the uh, first one, uh, and uh, I'll decide which way it goes after the fact because I don't want you all fighting for one and not the other. For the first one we'll give out is for anyone who leaves a review on Apple. If you've already left a review on Apple, you'll be entered into the contest. If you have not left a review on Apple, please do and then you'll be entered in. And we're gonna have this go until May 1st. So you have until May 1st to put an Apple review in if you want to uh, get a chance to win one of these CD-ROMs. And then, uh, same idea for the other one, but this one, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, if you're already subscribed, you're already entered into the contest. But if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on the podcast after it comes out, the link down is down below. You can go to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, and by May 1st, if you have subscribed, you are entered in. And we will get those uh, announced at a later date. But I really want to thank Billy for this. Uh, he actually uh, has a... Uh, let's, I'm, I'm just going to read what he said because I want to make sure I say it right. He says, uh, thank you for very uh, much for the offer to mention who I am. That would be greatly appreciated. Actually, I have an original progressive heavy metal band called... Ins insensate machine insensate machine and which it content its content and themes are very influenced by b5 and classic sci-fi our debut album is out and it's called war of the worlds based on orson welles's 1939 radio show go to insensate machine i-n-s-e-n-s-a-t-e machine.com for info so thanks again billy for uh sending this out to us we really do appreciate it and we'll get them to a good home so thank you thank you thank you for that Okay, guys, now we are off and running with our discussion on the episode, and our next bet, uh, our next big thing is going to be talking about the episodes and using our tried-and-true bracket system to rank each and every one of these episodes. This always do goes over really well, and we never screw it up ever, so it's great. We actually already had a tournament on our Twitter account, and I will show you all how the fans voted after we get all of our votes in for our bracket. Uh, how this works is every person on here will get a uh, chance to vote uh, for their favorite episode between two in each competition. And one time during the tournament, you have your thumb on the scale where you can add one extra vote to break some ties, to get somebody else to win, so forth and so on. Everyone uses it in the first round and forgets that they only get one, and then we have one person who screws everything up at the end, usually how this goes. So remember, you only get one of these for the entire tournament. And what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to the bracket now. And how this worked is I put this together using a, the Lurker's Guide score, so the P5 score. And I think, hopefully, I'm going to get over to my YouTube real quick to see if you guys can actually read this well enough. I hope you can. Please hold while I check that out. If you can't read it, let me know, and I'll zoom in. But I hopefully you can read it. Oh, yeah, it's coming loud and clear. Perfect. Okay. So, and also, we got, we got a complaint last time from our good friend Shannon. I don't know if she's watching the live today or not, but... She said, I don't remember half these episodes, so can you tell me what these episodes are about before we vote on them? Me and oh, either, by the way, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> if, we get to, if we get to a tie, you all in the chat will get to break that tie. So the first one we have is our basically our buy-in bracket. These are the, the, the lower scoring episodes, and we'll get to see who gets in there to go against some of the bigger heavyweights. And the first one we have is the number 17 seed, Rumors, Bargains, and Lies. Sheridan tricked the League of Non-Aligned Worlds into accepting his proposed defense pack. Delenn tries to work with an old rival to defuse a brewing Mimbari civil war. And then we have number 16 going against that. I can't that, see which is that. I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry, but I, cannot, I can see it on YouTube, but I can't see it on here. Is there a reason? Because I'm not sharing because it doesn't work when we go on YouTube. 
Good talk. You <laughs> if, continue if, on, Scott. <laughs> yeah, we tried that the first couple of seasons and it looked really, really crappy. So I'm with the magic okay. OBS. They're here. Start over. But Let's go. To, okay. So Epiphanies is a 16 rank. And that is Bester arrives with news of an Earth Alliance plan to further isolate Babylon 5. Garibaldi delivers some surprising news to Sheridan. So we have epiphanies and we have rumors, bargains, and lies. So we're just going to go through our group and uh, tell us what you're voting for and tell us why. And let's go, uh, I'll just go from my screen up. So, Mike, what do you got? Yeah, I meant that knew you were going to call on me first. <laughs> Um, man, that is actually kind of a tough one. Um, I feel like personally, I'm going to go with Epiphanies just because it's the best your episode. Who wants me to start the podcast? I mean, start the thing. I already did that, but, uh, uh, where's my start button? There it is. Start the tournament. Okay. So you're going to go with Epiphanies. So it gets one vote and then let's go over to Jesse. Um, because I agree with Mike on absolutely nothing. I'm going to go with 17. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Wow. I like the, I like the science behind that. <laughs> Let's get fighty. <laughs> Justin, what do you got? That epiphanies was the one where Garibaldi quit, right? Yep. Hmm. Oh, um, between the two, I'm going to have to go with the, uh, the bargains and lies episode got it nicole epiphanies kevin oh it's tough um i think i'll go with bargains and lies okay emily uh epiphanies had bester so we'll go with that <laughs> I, I can get behind that. It has bestered, right. therefore it is good. There's, you said the bargains and lies was where Sheridan does his little shitty manipulation. So Yeah, yeah which isn't good. a manipulation, and it was completely on board in a smart political move by Sheridan. Yes, that was that episode. Yeah, I still don't like him, doesn't matter. <laughs> Blake. Because it was a smart move by Sheridan to get the other races on board and maybe show that he actually knew what he was doing, I'm going to go with rumors, bargains, and lies. <laughs> Jesse's like, I win. I don't know how, but I win. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I was actually going to say this before Emily made her comment, but I, for one, I do think, I, as much as I dog Sheridan, this is one episode where his stra strategic mind comes out, and it actually is a really smart way of doing things. And he gets no one killed, and he gets everyone on board. And now that we've seen the entire season, we do know that this leads to the Lee Alliance. And uh, I just think it was a great conversation we had on the episode because we were fairly divided on how we felt about it. So I'm going to give Rumors, Bargains, and Lies its fifth vote, and it does move on. Don't wait, I want to – I want to – oh, no, I don't. Well, yeah, you, here's, you here's the problem it. is I can't see the final score yet, and I haven't been keeping track. Okay, it's five so to So I don't three. know if I want to throw my final vote at something or not. You're right. I'll, I'll, I'll call it out. I'll call it out. It's five to three. Okay. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'll say Mike's ready to it. bust his nut already. <laughs> me, and, me and Mike wow. were right. Me and Mike were right. Okay, we've got next. We've got number twenty-one, which is Racing Mars. So for Racing Mars, uh, give me one second here. There it is. Franklin and Marcus arrive on Mars to begin their undercover mission, and they get married. Sheridan confronts Garibaldi about his behavior and being a dick. And then I've added a little bit to the synopsis. And then the next one is our number 12 ranked episode, The Summoning. For The Summoning, we have... This was the third episode of the season, so most of us don't remember it at this point. Zack makes a discovery in the search for Garibaldi. Delin plans to attack the shadows, runs in... Uh, Delin's plan to attack the shadow runs into trouble. And Ivanova and Marcus attempt to solicit aid from the first ones. This is Zog where she goes around and tries to meet the first ones. So we'll go backwards this time, and we'll go with, uh, I'll, I'll vote first. And for me, I've got, I really need three screens. Two screens is not enough for me right now. For me, I'm going to go with the Racing Mars because I love the Marcus and Franklin buddy cop stuff. I love it, I love it, I love it. Blake, what do you got? 
I'm also uh, racing Mars for the uh, Franklin and Jason Carter stuff, especially after the interview we had. And those two, anything those two are in is just as bad as good as any time you've got Andreas Katsoulis and Peter Jurassic in a scene. I mean, it's just either one of them in there. Then we've got Emily. When do you want to vote? Um, We'll do Racing Mars because I do like the whole um, Marcus and Franklin dynamic. It at least brings some entertainment to otherwise lackluster episodes. Kevin. Racing Mars. Okay. Nicole. Oh, there's no question it's Racing Mars. Cool. And Justin. Uh, I'm going to go with Summoning just because I want to watch the world burn. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. It actually was rated higher. It's the 12 seed versus the 21 seed. Uh, I do like Jesse, Racing Mars, but I'm just going to throw a wrench in this whole thing. I'm good with that. Jesse, the score is 5-1 to one for Racing Mars. What do you got? Well, because I don't want Justin to be alone, Summoning. <laughs> and Mike. Uh, and it's because I want to, to prove two. to Jesse that we're more alike than she thinks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just like you. Um, I, I actually legitimately like the summoning uh, a yeah. little bit better. Uh, I do like the buddy cop stuff with Marcus and, and Franklin, but uh, summoning has Cartesia. And it's like, if I'm not mistaken, isn't this the scene where he takes Londo into his like room of severed heads? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Pretty, pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> And Mike, okay, well, ah, the, like the problem is you're you're not quite like Jesse because let's be honest, for those that have known Jesse for twenty years, none of us are afraid of you like we are of her. Fair. <laughs> it's because Mike okay. keeps it quiet. Mike's Mike's got it in him. You just yeah. have That's to right. That. I got that dog in me, but <laughs> it was a cute little insurrection put on by Justin, Jesse, and Mike. But Racing Mars wins with a five to three score. Mm. We're moving. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. We're moving on to the 13 versus the 20 seed. And this one we have exercise and vital powers. And with this episode, it is Garibaldi arrives on Mars to meet William Edgars. Lita helps Franklin in attempt to make contact with the frozen telepaths. And this is going up against conflicts of interest. And for this one, it is Garibaldi takes on a new job. The resistance counter propaganda uh, broadcast begin and Sheridan proposes a plan to protect the non-aligned world from raiders. So, uh, let's bounce around a bit here. Let's go over to mm, uh, Nicole. What do you got? What do you want for between what exercise, was the name? Oh. exercise of vital powers and conflicts of interest? Yeah, conflicts of interest. That was a good episode. Okay, conflicts gets a vote. Uh, Justin, what do you got? Um, exercise. Okay. Kevin. Skip me for a sec. Okay. <laughs> Jesse. He's reading the IMDb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exercise of vital power. Thank you, Jesse. Mike. Uh, I'm going to go with exercise on this one as well. Okay. It's three to one. Emily, what do you got? I'm reading through my notes to try to get a better idea. So I'm more informed on my opinion. Let's see. So my questions for conflicts of interest were about if Dakar still has the pink panties and if Veer got married. And my mm. comments for exercise of vital powers were fuck off, Sheridan. So let's go with conflicts of interest. Sounds good. Again, you picked the right scientific. one. Blake, what do you got? I am going with conflicts of interest. Uh, part And part of the reason why, and it was a back and forth for me, but one of the reasons is uh, Conflicts has that scene where Ivanova goes down to the planet and has that interaction with the Zathras. Mm, one of the Zathrai. Yeah. Yes. And so Zathrai. I'm voting for the Zathrai. <laughs> I got that. I got that. Kevin, you ready? I'm going with Conflicts of Interest. Okay. So it is three to four. Um, I, I, I like both episodes, and I kind of want to throw one to the chat. So I'm going to vote for Exercise and Vital Powers and tie us up. So before I go to the chat and have a quick vote, does anyone want to put their thumb on the scale? We I'm all learned our lesson from later. the last time. Yeah, we all learned our lesson. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the chat, my friends. And give me one second here. Okay, so here 
comes the pole. And here it is. Do you want exercise of vital powers or conflicts? Here you go. Don't let me vote. down, chat. Make the right decision. <laughs> and we Don't do let great me down. on spelling. Can we vote on the chat? No. <laughs> In the words of my father, clicker. don't fuck this up. Conflicts, conflicts. Oh, if this ends 50-50 right in the chat. <laughs> Do it! Do it! Conflicts. Okay, there are 47 people watching, only 10 votes. 14 votes. Come on. Come Can on, I vote? They're saying no, we can't right vote. vote. <laughs> okay, conflicts is taking the lead. Yeah. Come on, Come on, Come on exercise. We got I'm this. Give conflicts. You another, uh, 30 seconds. We're back oh, to now tie. it's 50 50 again. Don't don't make me cry, chat. Mess. Oh, exercise. Come on, y'all. Press that exercise button. No, this is like... truck coming in. Oh, my God. This is so <laughs> nerve wracking. We had 19 votes <laughs> going once, going twice. Oh, Conflicts. I just got another vote. Oh, Damn it. unvoted. How do you unvote? <laughs> it went from 20 to 19. Okay, we're going to oh, close it up there. Okay. Exercise is Damn at 52. It. Yeah. Percent. And Come on, whatever. guys. Y'all let me down. So exercise is the winner of that race. <laughs> Look how we far go. we've come since uh, telling everybody to, to vote put now. it in the chat, and then we had I to count. the poll function. It's great. Right. <laughs> Look how oh, far we've come. Be, oh, this is going to be one that's going to be kind of rough, guys, I think. So next we have the number 19 seed, intersections in real time. Uh -oh. And yeah, uh-oh. <laughs> and here it is. The intersections in real time is, it's pretty short and sweet. Sheridan faces an inquisitor from Earth Dome, the end. And then we are going up against atonement. This is, Delenn is recalled to Minbar to resolve a problem concerning her relationship with Sheridan and must finally face up to her role in the Earth Minbari War. Sheridan sends Marcus and Franklin to Mars on a secret mission. So that is it. We've got atonement versus intersections in real time. Blake, what do you got? I'm going to go with intersections in real time, and I can't say why I'm not voting for atonement yet. Good point. Okay. That's next week. <laughs> Secret information. Yeah. Uh. If you've already watched the movie we were supposed to review before this, you already know. Oh. Nicole, what do you got? I haven't watched that shit yet. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Intersections as well. Cool, cool. Mike? God damn it. I'm going to go with Atonement uh, because I think it's a better episode. <laughs> Jesse? Atonement! <laughs> it's two to two. Kevin? Atonement. Justin? You know, I... Sorry. Oh, I, uh, I'm, I, I find myself surprised that I'm voting for that over Intersections in real time, but I really like Atonement. Justin? Atonement's the one where, like, Naroon sacrifices himself, right? No. That's no. Not. The Atonement is when no, that she goes back to the Grey Council and she drinks the little magic drink that makes Oh, then goes good. through all, like, the little, exactly. like, psycho trip. In, in Oregon, those um, are the uh, sodas you can buy at the pot dispensaries that cause that. Yes. yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, I need to plan my trip to Oregon. Um, <laughs> anywho, I'm going to go with intersections. Okay, we're tied three to three. Uh, and, uh, who hasn't voted yet? Emily. Atonement, because it's an episode about Delin and not focused solely on Sheridan. And also, I have a note that Zach finally got his uniform fitted. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Which was an issue, so there you go. We talked about this a lot during our podcast for Intersections. For I think some reason... I think it's an amazing episode. I think it's well acted. It's well scripted. It is one of my favorites of the entire show. And I am going to vote for intersections in real time. So we have another tie. Four to four. Anyone want to do their thumb on the scale before I do another poll? No, I'm saving my bukkake for later. Yeah, I really I'm, want to I'm, mess I'm, this up later. So I don't feel that strongly about any of these episodes. So. Right. <laughs> I'm going to save mine because I know the chat's going to vindicate me on this one because they know good television when they see it. So I'm going to make this poll real quick. Intersections versus uh, tone. I'm and... just saving mine to vote against uh, deconstruction. So don't worry about oh, me. Oh, don't worry. The chat <laughs> will back me up on that one too. 
Uh, let's see here. Give me one moment to get this done. There we go. And here we go. Start poll. Intersections versus atonement. Uh. Inter intersection comes out to a early lead. Oh, atonement's taking it. 53, 40. Chat, come on. Don't screw this up for me. Don't, Don't get your fingers no. broken. Atonement. <laughs> Just I, no. I, try, I tried to. I tried. Okay, for but, those wondering why we're afraid know. of Jesse, she's now threatening to break <laughs> fingers. <laughs> See, I think they're voting I just because I said they would vote the other way, punks. I would never. <laughs> Don't make me cry again. On oh, you're going to make Nicole cry. Change your vote. Yeah, intersections, people. You already let me down with one. Don't let me down with another. I'm disappointed in all of you. <laughs> Excuse me. We're at 26 Jesse votes. once beat me up back in college and was a fun experience. Oh man, You might like it. Vote. You don't know. Yeah. Can I vote? Might be a new kink for Question. the show. Right. I vote. Damn it. <laughs> Fine. 27 votes. It's been a minute. I'm going to close it. You guys suck. Go watch another podcast. Okay. Atonement ah. wins. 59. Wow. Oh. Actually, actually it, it dropped to 57, but it was still in the lead. So Atonement takes it, even though it is the lesser of two episodes. Okay. So let me give it another five. Oh. Move on. You want to cry now, Scott? Oh, don't worry. We'll fight. <laughs> hey, I was upset Here's about five. it too. Rude. Oh. Your feelings, I actually care about. So, <laughs> <laughs> next we have moments of transition. So for this one, it is the Warrior Cast demands Delin surrender. Bester makes an offer to an increasingly desperate Lita. Sheridan is compelled to act after receiving horrible news from Ivanova, Ivanova about his, her his father. And then this is going to go up against. Uh, do, 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 do. the illusion of truth and for that one it is there here ISN sends a team to do a secondary story about Babylon 5 and our crew is fucking stupid and lets them on the station and the rest happens from there so guys we have moments of transition and the illusion of truth let's go to Jesse first moments of transition Kevin? Moments of transition. I'm going to vote moments too because the illusion of truth really pisses me off. Uh, Blake? Moments of transition because how fucking stupid can they be with ISN exactly. reporters multiple yeah, goddamn yeah. times? Exactly. No offense to Maggie. Maggie's great. Right. Maggie wasn't there at that point. Right. She's yeah, in prison. That was, it, was, it was evil <laughs> ISN at that point. It was yeah. the lady from the West Wing. <laughs> Emily? Um, I guess Don't. I'm going to have to go with moments of transition, even though it's a Naroon episode. Naroon is amazing. Justin. That, that, that's a bad thing. So one of these episodes reminds me of one of my favorite episodes from Battlestar Galactica. Uh, um, and so I'm going to have to go illusion of truth because is, as I said, as I said during that episode, it is, it's an episode I love to hate. So like, I, as okay. much as that episode pissed me off, it is still a very enjoyable episode for me to watch. So that's where my vote's going. Cool. Mike, five to one moments of transitions in the uh, It's easily moments of transition for me. Okay. Nicole, you're not the tiebreaker. Six to one. What do you want to do? <laughs> yeah, it's moments of transition because I hated the fucking ISN reporters. They gave a bad name to broadcasters and oh, made yeah, me mad. Absolutely. I was, I was literally pissed pissed at that episode so yeah uh, i'm i'm with blake though i'm more pissed at the b5 crew that than I am too ISN. Mm. ISN a little bit of both exactly what they were doing the b5 crew yeah. had no clue what they were doing <laughs> yeah yeah it was okay, just infuriating to watch okay this is the last of our buy-in round and here comes kevin's hate so we have <laughs> deconstruction of falling stars for deconstruction the lurker's guide says fourth season finale a look back at the impact of B5 from 100, 500, 1,000, and 1 million years into the future. And it is going up against... Do, 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 lines How better of communication. episode. Oh. oh, shut up. Lines of communication. <laughs> Franklin and Marcus try to convince the leaders of the Resistance to go along with Sheridan's plan to unseat Clark. 
Delenn investigates a series of attacks on Minbari allies. Minbar begins to slide towards civil war. Let's go to Blake first on this one. Skip me for now. No. Let's not go to Blake first on this one. Let's go to Mike first on this one. <laughs> ah, for Pete's sake. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, lines of communication. I, I, I don't know the the deconstruction of falling stars. We we had a lengthy recent conversation about it, so I won't rehash it. But it was more miss than win for me. Jesse, um, lines of communication because I fucking hated deconstruction. Hated Sorry. it. Sorry. Justin. <laughs> Deconstruction. Good man. Nicole. Sorry, Scott, but I'm going with lines of communication. Well, I knew you had no taste. You watched Twilight. Kevin. Uh, rude. <laughs> <laughs> lines of communication. It's four to one, Emily. What do you got? Well, because I'm really interested in what the hell I was thinking when I wrote my notes, I'm going to have to go with lines of communication because I commented someone would make a great dr frankenfurter from rocky horror who the <laughs> hell was i talking about <laughs> number one yes <laughs> jesus blake deconstruction i vote for deconstruction because it's an amazing episode it's great sci-fi it reminds me of the twilight zone and it's a great way to wrap up the series season uh or series if it was canceled and uh yeah Anyone want to put their thumb on the scale? Because if I do it, it's only going to be four to five. Because I want to. <laughs> Blake, you're not going to waste it on this, are you? No. Please? Damn it. Okay. That's why I was seeing where it went before I did. It's five to three, and Kevin has no soul. Okay. Moving right along. <laughs> We're jumping up to the top of the bracket now, and we are to the number one seed, which is interesting to me that this was number one, but it was. And that is Into the Fire. So Into the Fire goes like uh, this. The Army of Light mounts the final assault. Londo learns some surprising information about Mr. Morden and the fact that he killed his girlfriend. So that's Into the Fire. Who, let's see. And then we have with it uh, Rumors, Bargain, and Lies, which we had already voted on the last one. So I will not read that one again. So let's go to uh, Kevin first. Into the fire are rumors, bargains, and lies. Oh, man. It is really hard to keep these episodes straight when they, they don't uh, call out to you like some of them do. Um, I'll go with Into the Fire. And Nicole. Uh, this is a hard one, but I guess I'm going to have to say probably into the fire too. Okay. Justin. I wasn't listening. What was into the fire again? <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. Londo <laughs> learns disturbing news about Morden. Sheriff gets sweet. his wish. Is that the, is that the head on the spike episode? Yep. It is. Yes. Into the fire. Okay. Mike. Yeah, it's going to be Into the Fire. Jesse. Into the Fire. Emily. Into the Fire. Like. Into the Fire. Yeah. Uh, and Justin, you already hit on it. It is the hi episode. Hi. So that gets eight to zero, our first shutout. Woo! Okay, now we've got our number eight seed. Versus our number nine seed. Number nine is The Long Night. So for The Long Night, the synopsis is... This is episode number five, by the way. Again, another early one. As the Army of Light prepares to strike against the shadows, Londo and Veer continue to plot Cartesia's downfall. Ivanova and Lorien look for more first ones. The shadows unleash, uh, unleash a terrible new weapon, the Planet Killer. And this has, uh, this is a Cartagia episode again, Mike. So there you go. So let's, uh, let's see. And then we have Between the Darkness and the Light, which is episode 20. Garibaldi is captured by the Mars Resistance. Ivanova's fleet clashes with Clark's forces. A plan to free Sheridan is launched. Okay, let's start now voting. 
And we'll go to Justin first. The Long Night or Between the Darkness and the Light? I like The Long Night. Actually, I like really like both episodes, but Darkness and Light, I'll have to go with. Okay. Nicole? I think I'm going to have to go with Between the Darkness and Light on this one. Okay. Kevin? Between the Darkness and the Light. Jesse? Uh, I'm going to go with the, um, the Long Night. Okay. Mike? This, yeah, boy, this is a tough one. Um, I, I'm gonna say just because at the point at this point in the show, between the darkness and the light, um, things things were really popping off. Things were a lot more uh, exciting, kicking into that kind of end game gear. So I, I'm, that's that's it. That's the only reason this one knocks the other one out. Okay, I'm gonna vote for the long night because I love all the Veer and um, Londo stuff. I just love it, love it, love it. And Blake. I'm going with Between the Darkness and the Light, and part of it is that uh, council scene where you've got Londo and Jakar convening the League of non Worlds Worlds to take mm-hmm. that vote, and you've just got that whole exchange between Londo, Jakar, Veer, and Delenn with that line about politics and morality on the same side. I love that whole scene, uh, so I'm going Between the Darkness and the Light. I don't think there's a bad choice here, unlike anything yeah. that Deconstruction of Falling Stars is in. You know, who hurt you? <laughs> wah, wah. Emily, uh, the long night. It is five to three, and uh, we're gonna lock that one in because I don't think anyone's gonna try to save it. So between the darkness and the light moves on, and it will get trounced in the next episode. Okay, uh, next one we have the number five seed, which is whatever happened to Mister Garibaldi. This is episode number two. Jakar tries to avoid capture by the Centauri while continuing his search. Delenn urges the Rangers to strike against the Shadows. And this, uh, yeah, that is uh, the episode in general. And then I've already read about, have I? Yes. The next other one is t- number 21, Racing Mars. So, whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi versus Racing Mars. Blake? I'm going to go with Racing Mars. Okay. Kevin? Racing Mars. Nicole? Yeah, I'm also going to go Racing Mars. I'm going to vote whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi because I love the Jakar stuff. And it also has Marcus and Jakar, which we don't get much. So I like that. And Justin. Racing Mars. Emily. Uh, Whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi? It's four to two, Jesse. What do you want to do? Whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi? It's four to three, Mike. Do you want to watch the world burn? Nope, I'm actually going to go, well, yes, I guess I do. I'm going to go with uh, whatever happened to Mr. Garibaldi. Um, yes. <laughs> Racing Mars just doesn't do a whole lot for me. Like, yeah. I, I, I think I'm, I'm realizing as we're going through this, the first batch of episodes and the last batch of episodes are really strong. And the middle stuff, uh, not as strong. Okay, yeah. it's tied. Anyone want to do the thumb on the scale? Can okay. we just give the vote to Lanier, who just looked at Sheridan and went, woohoo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to go to the chat. Here we go. Let me uh, type this sucker up. So we've got Mr. Garibaldi versus... I think this is the most we've had the chat ever vote in one of these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we yeah. were split this season. That was season. fantastic. Yeah, we I love it. We yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, okay. and, as, and as Ryan from Yum Yum Podcast pointed out, the first ones were, were pretty divided on, on quite a few things this season, too, which uh, is interesting. Atragon says, Mormons in space. Are you talking about The Expanse, sir? Which Ryan mm-hmm. is also mm-hmm. reviewing right now. Oh, I'll have to check that out, Ryan. It's, wow, uh, yeah. not even close. Racy Mars is out ahead with 73%. Only 15 votes this time. We had 26 last time, so it can shift. Oh, but maybe not. <laughs> it's still going vote, Racy Mars. Vote, 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 vote. Uh, 68, 32, 65, ooh, ooh. 35. Getting closer. Oh, oh. Uh, so how, who keeps unvoting? <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Now, Jesse, I think you influenced the vote when you held up a sign the last time. So if you ever want to try to influence one of these again. (laughs) 
<laughs> Jesse okay. is a bad influence in all things. Get it? Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I think we're going to lock it down. It is 64% Racing Mars, 36% Whatever Happened to Mr. Garibaldi. So we'll end that poll there. We'll come but, back uh, over here. And Racing Mars takes the checkered flag and moves on. And it will probably lose in the next round. Okay, 13, the exercise of vital powers versus the fourth seed, which again, it's weird that that is number four to me, but okay. And that is no surrender, no retreat. Sheridan's forces attempt to liberate Proxima three. Londo tries to enlist Chakar's aid in backing Sheridan against Earth. And let's go to our votes. Who wants to vote for exercise and who wants to vote for no surrender? Let's go to Jesse first. I'm going to go with no surrender just because um, this is the one that got us all like in a tizzy about respect. Like we went back and forth forever about yeah, yeah. them not respecting each other. Mm -hmm. Mike. Yeah, I'm going to go with no surrender. Justin. Uh, what was the question? God damn it, Justin. <laughs> Would you like to vote for no surrender, no retreat, or exercise of vital powers? Uh, sugar, honey, iced tea. Um, <laughs> no surrender. Yes, sir. Nicole? Yeah, no surrender. Kevin? No surrender. This was our live review, by the way. Emily? Uh, no surrender, because I made a note that beer was back. Or was it? No, it wasn't. We did a live review in season three, didn't we? I'm yes. On the, yes. I mixed up the two big episodes. Blake. No surrender. Yep. And I'm going to cap it off with an eight to zero for no surrender, no retreat. And let's keep on going. So we have the number three seed, which is the face of the enemy. And for this one, it is Sheridan's search for his father leads him into danger on Mars. Lita warns Franklin of an impending clash between telepaths and mundanes. Garibaldi chooses between loyalty to Sheridan and to Mr. Edgars. And let's get to the vote and we'll go to Emily first. Face of the enemy or atonement? Um, oh man, that's tricky. Because Atonement's like all about Dylan, but Face of the Enemy has Bester. Oh, see? That, your, your science fails you. What is this? Uh, um, we'll go with the Face of the Enemy. Okay. Justin. The Face of the Enemy was the really shitty bar fight scene, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> In slow motion with some... I do, else. yeah... Um, atonement. Okay, Nicole. Can I do half votes? Like, can I put a half vote no. on one, half vote on the other? No. <laughs> I just okay. figured out how to use a poll. Don't make me do half votes. <laughs> <laughs> well, shockingly to Ryan, I'm gonna choose atonement. Oh, is Ryan making assumptions in the chat? Yeah, he said I should vote for the other one because it ends the Garibaldi plot, which is a great point but I got to go with the tone, man. Jesse. Face of the enemy. Mike. Oh, man. Um, I think atonement. Okay. Kevin, it's three to two. What do you want? Which one's winning? Atonement. <laughs> well, that's one I was going to vote for, so excellent. Okay. <laughs> it's four to two. Um, I'm kind of with... Blake on atonement. I think you need to watch the next thing we're going to watch to get more out of it. And I really do like face of the enemy, even the bar fight. Some of vote face of the enemy, Blake, it's four to three atonement's winning. And I'm also going to go face of the enemy. Uh, I think the bar fight was great, especially when you listen to some of JMS's commentary about what it feels like to actually be in that type of a situation mm. and the filming of it. So I, I liked the way they did it. I liked that episode. So for me, it's face of the enemy. Yeah, for, for those playing the home game, it's one of the 15 different ways JMS was almost killed or murdered in his lifetime. Uh, the autobiography is fun. Okay, it is tied 4-4. to four. Anyone want to put their thumb on the scale? How many more rounds of this shit do we have? 
Uh, two. We have an Elite Eight and a Final Four. One of the championships of three. I'll put on for face of the enemy. Blake is doing face of the enemy. Anyone else? It's five to four now. Face it will win unless somebody else does something else. Going once. Going twice. Face of the enemy. Two I do three. it. Oh, what? What are you going to do, Justin? I do it. To, for a I do it for a tournament. I'll do it too for face of the enemy. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's three down. That's three down. Blake, Justin, Jesse, out. It's now six to five, face of the enemy. Anyone else want to help Atonement out? Come on, come on. Even if you do, it's still going to go to the chat. And you saw how I got burned on that one last time. So I'm not that committed to it. Okay. I I think these are both good episodes. Going twice. Face of the enemy is sold. Woo. Okay, we're moving on. Now we have uh, two episodes uh, that are the 11 and 6 seeds. So we have. Moments of Transition, which we've already spoken on, and Rising Star. This is the second to last episode, the penultimate episode. EarthGov decides Sheridan's fate. Dylan makes excuse me, Dylan makes a remarkable proposition to the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. Garibaldi searches for lease. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, Earth does stuff. Okay. <laughs> we have Moments of Transition and Rising Star. Let's go to Nicole first. What's your vote? I got to go with Rising Star on this one. That was such a a ch- changing episode or a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um I guess you said penultimate, but it's it was a important episode to move the plot along. So yeah. Yeah, well, Sheridan's now El Presidente. Yes. Let's go to Kevin. What do you got? This one's a rough one cuz I really like both episodes. Uh, um but I I think I think I got to give uh the nod to rising star. Okay. And let's go to uh, Emily. Uh, um, we're going to give it to rising star. Cause there was a joke about Jakar being premature. <laughs> it was a lot of that. <laughs> Not only premature, but I think Londo uh, made the inference that Jakar was a little smaller than most too. So, well, he like, also doesn't have six. Does well, it have six? So, yeah. Lando, that's everyone's problem. Blake. I'm going to go with moments of transition for John Vickery and the whole oh. Maroon bit with yeah. that, especially the resolution of the Mimbari Civil War with the Starfire Wheel when he calls out the leader of the warrior cast for being too cowardly to get in the Starfire Wheel with Delenn and basically makes the proclamation that his heart's religious and he ends it. So I, I like moments of transition. I get it. I was born a warrior, but my heart is religious. Uh, I'm going to vote. Man, Blake, you just, you know, I was going to vote Rising Star, but I love Nerun. And uh, even though he pisses off Emily, I love him. So I'm going to do moments as well. Justin. I honestly both, I love, yeah, agree. I love both episodes. Um, God, this is a really hard one. Moments of transition. Good call, Justin. I won't be okay. sad with either one of these winning. Uh, yeah, I I struggle with that, but it's tied now. Mike, what do you got? Moments. Um, I'm going with moments. It's okay. uh, okay. you get Vickery and you get Vester, uh, uh, in in this one as well. It, as well and the stuff with the president i mean we think we all agreed like i i got it it still pissed me off (laughs) so (laughs) jesse it is four for moments three for rising you are the final vote i'm gonna go with rising star okay tied four to four anyone want to put the thumb on that their scale blake justin and jesse cannot anybody else okay we're going to go over to the chat again. Man, we, 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 you guys are right. We've been hel- hanging out with the chat a lot this time. Here we go. Let's go with Moments versus Rising. Go to it, my minions. Vote. By the way, while you're voting, there are 49 people here. I'm sorry, 54 people here and only 16 likes. So uh, can you do me a solid and click that like button? Mm-hmm. That'd be great. Thanks. Oh, Moments is at 90% versus Rising's 10. That's interesting. I thought this was going to be more divided. You got 11 votes in. 
Moments is actually going ahead, 92 to 8%. Yes, Ryan, I am aware I voted for the President Sheridan episode, even though I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> but basically because there was naughty jokes. <laughs> but it was, uh, as uh, Nicole pointed out, or maybe it was Jesse, we got Daddy Sheridan in that episode. Mm. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> 76 to 24%. Rising is trying to stay in there. Come on, that's, Rising that's Star. Some... And that was some of Claudia Christian's best acting. It's true. And Rising true. Star. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so what the hell's that's wrong with That's a major reason people? I voted for it. We got the death of Marcus. So you got yes. funny sex jokes and amazing acting by her. Everything else, who cares? Yeah. Well, this is um, sad. The chat disagrees. It is uh, going to get locked down at 76% for moments of transition. So we're going to go ahead and give that win to Moments, another upset, the 11th seed beating the 6th seed, and we're moving on along. Now we have the first episode of the season at the 7th seed, and that is the Hour of the Wolf. So for the Hour of the Wolf, it is Sheridan's disappearance begins to unravel the Alliance. Londo discovers that Emperor Cartagia has struck a disturbing deal with the Shadows. Jakar decides to search for Mr. Garibaldi. Ivanova, Delenn, and Lita head towards Zaha Doom to search for Sheridan. And this is also a Mr. Morton episode as well, because Mr. Morton comes back as a charcoal briquette. Okay, <laughs> let's get to the... Vo oh, no, we have, the other one's falling towards apotheosis. We haven't done that one yet either. Mm -hmm. So the number 10 seed, falling towards apotheosis. This is... The Vorlons step up their battle against the Shadows. Londo uncovers a new wrinkle in the plan to unseat Emperor Cartagia. Sheridan asks Garibaldi to remove Kosh from the station. And Delenn gets a surprise from Sheridan. Okay, let's move into the voting. We've got the seven seed Hour of the Wolf versus number 10, Falling Toward Apotheosis. Let's go to Mike first. Oh, this is a really tricky one, but I'm going to say I enjoyed falling toward apotheosis more. Okay. Kevin. Or the wolf. Emily. Uh, I don't know. Or the wolf is when we got introduced to Lorien, wasn't it? Kind of, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how we'll do you feel about it? it sounds like you don't like Laurier. Do you want to tell from that the first matter. episode? <laughs> yeah, me and the season are not friends, but yeah, falling towards apotheosis. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with Hour of the Wolf. I think it really sets up season four well as a first episode. And it's got a lot going on. Blake. I'm going to go with apotheosis. Okay. It is now three to two for Apotheosis. Nicole. Hour of the Wolf. Uh, it is now three to three. Justin. Apotheosis. God okay. damn it. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't realize it was unmuted. <laughs> so when is that ever stopped you? <laughs> Jesse, it is now four to three. Apotheosis is winning. What would you like to do? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Apotheosis. Okay, Sorry. it's a five to three. Anyone want to sh do some shenanigans on that one? I don't think so, but anyone want to? Okay, five to three, falling towards apotheosis moves on. Oh, and here we go. The last oh, of this round. <laughs> <laughs> that was so number... gross. I just wanted to like pick at it and pull him apart. Ugh. <laughs> that was a sensory nightmare. That sounds like That sounds like a really bad kink you have. I want to pick at his scabs. It's going to be great. Emily's Aspie's kicked in right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in this one, we have lines of communication, which we've already discussed against in game Sheridan's forces make their final strike. Marcus weighs a vital decision, which obviously is to take uh, his ass back to B five and save Ivanova. So we have the number 18 seed lines of lines of communication versus the number two seed in game. Kevin, what do you got? End game. Okie dokie. 
Nicole. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Endgame as well. Okay. Justin. Endgame, and then can I throw my knob on top of it to weigh it down even further? <laughs> Would you like to wait? Because I guarantee you it's going to pass. I yeah. think you want... Oh, you already used yours anyway, so no, you can't. No, but I was—I wanted like an extra, like thunk the apple ba baby on the table, like you know. <laughs> What's okay. happening? What's happening? I don't know. We can't take him anywhere. <laughs> Jesse. Endgame. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, Endgame. I'm gonna also vote for Endgame, and I'm not gonna drop my whatever on my table. No. Uh, Arm holding the apple, baby arm. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Wait, did you guys know that Endgame is the name of a Taylor Swift song? I learned that the other day. It's also the best Avengers movie. I was gonna say, it's and it's true. also it's an the Avengers best movie. MCU movie. And it's a really, opinion. really crappy. Uh, uh, yeah, it's the name uh, on the coffin. Series finale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In case you were thinking, oh, Voyager's okay. Oh shit. No, it's really not. <laughs> Blake is going to take a drink. Hold on. <laughs> Blake, take your shot, and then... Well, there you go, buddy. What do you got? What's your vote? Are, we, are you playing a drinking game of when we talk about Voyager? No, I figured if we were going to get into Taylor Swift, I was going to need something stronger than water. <laughs> and I'm voting for Endgame. Yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Okay. Emily, uh, it's seven to zero. What would you like to do? I'm going to stick with lines of communication. Okay, seven to one. I don't think we could make that happen even if we tried. Okay, <laughs> so seven to one, and now we're in to <laughs> the Elite Eight. Here we go. Okay, we've already had all the synopsis at this point, so I'm just going to roll through this. We've got number one seed, Into the Fire, versus number eight seed, Between the Darkness and the Light. Emily, what do you got? Uh... I think into the fire. I don't know. I can't. We just talked about these, and my brains are like, I don't know what the fuck the episode yeah, is. It's but tough when we're doing these. Into the fire. We'll go with it. I mean, I could read the synopsis again, but I think Blake. No, please me. don't. God, Jesus, <laughs> fuck okay, it. Jesse. Just pick uh, one. What's your vote, Jesse? I, what were the two choices? <laughs> oh, Jesus. oh Jesus, fuck, Jesse. Oh my God, you just said you don't want the synopsis again. What the hell? I just need the fucking names. God <laughs> damn it. You come to this podcast for quality, ladies and gentlemen. Into the fire versus between the darkness and the light. Into the fire. Shit. Fuck. Thank you. Moving on. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to follow that. Um, <laughs> I don't. Oh, man. Uh, what happens when we drink and alive? <laughs> well, Thanks, and, how, and how did we come up with like the two epic space battle conclusions being mm. head to head in round two or whatever this is? Like, yeah. um, man, that's a tough one. I I think I'm gonna go with between the darkness and the light only because of how weird the fucking ice cube lady is. <laughs> <laughs> the weird the ice cube lady, Justin. I think I'm going to go shit fuck too, and I'm going to do it in the fire. <laughs> and by the way, in case anyone hears the dog barking, yes, it is my dog, and I'm going to have to yell at people later. Nicole. Uh, between the darkness and the light. Okay, it is now three to two. Oh, God. Kevin, what do you got? Between the darkness and the light. We are tied. Blake, what mm. do you got? Darkness and the light. There you go. Another Nicole. shot. Sorry, Tim. We Nicole, didn't have to bring like Taylor and, Swift that time. Nicole, it's like you and me are on the same wavelength, like most of us both. I know. Weird. It's crazy. Yeah. And I, mean, I and I shot? made and I made Blake drink, so I don't know if that's good or bad. Excellent. This is gonna in be In fairness, a... most of you have done that at one point. <laughs> uh, in fairness, I don't think I it don't know what you're talking about, Blake. Blake drink, so Right. It does not, no. <laughs> or smoke cigars for that matter. Um so uh or both oh, at Mike, the same time. Right. That's the best. Mike makes a good point. And also, too, I will say that Between the Darkness and the Light kind of ends a story where Into the Fire does not. So I'm going to go with Between the Darkness and the Light. It is five to three, and it is a bracket buster. The eight seed will beat the one seed unless somebody wants to chime in. Apple baby arm. 
No, You've it's already it's done it. We're done. We're done. Okay, yes. We're done. This just... bracket is as long as the goddamn season. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to point out. It's almost as painful. Yeah. Right. Yes. Oh, no, I we haven't got into Twilight yet, so we're good. <laughs> okay. Number 21, Racing Mars versus Ford. No surrender, no retreat. Uh, Nicole? Uh, no surrender, no retreat. Jesse? No surrender. Mike? No surrender. Kevin? Man, um... No surrender, no retreat. Emma. I like Racing Mars. Emily. Uh, oh. no surrender. Justin. No surrender. Blake. I think Justin just got kicked in the apple baby arm, but no <laughs> surrender. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll count that, that time of night, guys. <laughs> No surrender as well. Oh. Okay, that is eight to zero for no surrender. Moving right along, we've now got the face of the enemy versus moments of transition. Blick. Uh skip me for a minute. Okay, Mike. <sighs> Can't believe you do this to me again. <laughs> You're welcome, Mike. Um I can skip you as well, Jesse. No, no, I'm. I ain't no bitch. Uh, <laughs> moments of transition, but, but Blake is. <laughs> Jesse. Uh, face, face, face of the enemy, please. Face, For face, them. face of the enemy. Got it. <laughs> Nicole. Uh, moments of transition. Kevin. Moments of transition. You guys are gonna drive me to drink. I'm gonna have to actually go get alcohol. Cheers, Jesse. Justin, don't tell me that I'm was cut. juice earlier. Come on, it was juice, goddamn it! It had ice in it. Who drinks Good. wine and ice? I've seen people put put uh, ice in, in weird. Or... Just, I've seen I people no put ice in beer, and that's weird. That is weird. That's kind of like drinking Miller Lite. It's the same thing. Justin, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't. Get what I'm about to was. come all over that face. Holy fucking shit! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, Emily, how would you like to respond? I don't think I want to respond to that. That's scary. God. Um, but a face of the enemy. That's yeah. That's. Uh, I got <laughs> nothing after that. <laughs> Blake. It, it really sucks being the only sober person here right now. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm pretty oh, sober. A, I'm oh, pretty yeah, sober. I have a, an alcoholic drink. First okay. Of all. I had one beer. Okay. Um, yeah. I, uh, crap. Let's let's have some fun. I'm gonna go face of the enemy. Although moments is really good too. So it's tied four to four. Anybody want to put their thumb on the scale? How many more rounds do we have left? Uh, we have the final four so many. and uh, the championship. Ugh. Going once, going twice. Uh, sold. We're going to go to the chat. Stop go ask what the hell is going on. I just want you to understand that this is what happens with us every damn time we get together. We derail and shit goes sideways quickly and nobody knows how we got here. So <laughs> and it's usually pervy. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> okay, chat vote. Do you want the face of the enemy or moments of transition? Face, 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 oh, face, God. face. I can't unhear it, Justin. I can't unhear it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I could uh, could uh, contribute to your all's therapy. Thank you. Seventy one percent for moments. Twenty seven percent for face. As it should be. For moments. Nice. Still going. Only six. Come on, chat. Guys. <laughs> While you're voting, again, 53 people in here right now, only 25 likes. I assume the other 25 people are just mean until you click the button. 72%. Oh, it's it's hovering. So we're going to go ahead and end this sucker at 75, 25. Oh, oh 68, 32 still. It's pretty damn high. So we're going to go with that. 65, 35 is the final percentage, and that is for moments of transition. Whoop, whoop. So it I mean, transitions to the final four. Uh -huh. I'm a winner either way because I have pierogies, so. 
I'm a yeah. winner. <laughs> it's a race. I am winning. Okay, number 10, Falling Toward Apotheosis versus what number a, two. What a Endgame. great movie. <laughs> it is a great movie. I watched it again like a week ago. Just cuz. <laughs> Rat race for all those playing their home games. Emily, Endgame, Falling Towards Apotheosis. Uh, Apotheosis. Okay, Justin. Endgame. Mike. Man, um... Dude, I don't know. Uh, Endgame feels like the bigger of the two episodes, so I guess I'll give it to it. It is the end of the Civil War. Okay. Jesse? Uh, Endgame. Kevin? Endgame. Nicole? Endgame, baby. Uh, Blake? Endgame. I'm going to vote Endgame as well. It is 7 to 1. It moves on, and we are now into the final four. We've Woo! got Between the Darkness and the Light versus No Surrender and No Retreat. Ooh. The eighth seed versus the fourth seed. Blake, what do you got? Which the one end? of us? Blake. Uh, the end of the Shadow War versus the real start of the Civil War. Start of the Civil War. No surrender, no retreat gets one. Kevin. No surrender. Justin. No surrender. Mike. Mm. Oh, why do these all have to be so hard now? Um, I I think Between the Darkness and the Light is the better episode. Jesse? I'm going to say Darkness and Light, please. Yes, ma'am. Emily? No surrender. Blake. For the jury vote. It's in the cold. I already voted. Yet. I'll vote again. <laughs> <Me> too. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a hard one, but I'm going to go with no surrender, no retreat. I like the end of the Shadow War, so I'm going to do between the darkness and the light. It's five to three. Anyone want to do some thumb action? Ha ha ha. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> Come on, somebody wants to finger this episode. God damn it. Okay, we're moving on. No Surrender moves on. (laughs) We now have the last of the final four, Moments of Transition, number 11, versus number two, Endgame. Kevin. Endgame. Jesse. Endgame. Mike. Uh, Endgame. Justin. Endgame. Emily. I don't know which one do I hate the least. Well, you hate they season were... three. Let's see. Moments of transition. <laughs> My note was this better not suck, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, God. I don't. I really don't like Endgame, so I guess moments of transition. <laughs> I find that funny. Blake. Endgame. I'm going to go with Endgame as well, though Moments is really good. Nicole. Endgame. Okay, it is 7-1 to one Endgame. So we are now into our championship round, and my screen's not big enough, so I'm going to do this. No Surrender, No Retreat, the number four seed, versus Endgame, the number two seed. Mm-hmm. So let's get going here. Uh, let's go with Justin. What do you got? Endgame. Endgame. Nicole. Wait, these are the last two? This is it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Are you I oof. I loved Endgame, but I got to go with No Surrender, No Retreat. Uh oh, Kevin. Endgame. Jesse. Endgame. Mike. Yeah, Endgame. I when Jesse said that, I just heard Picard say Engage. Endgame. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah. Emily. And uh, No Surrender. Blake. No Surrender. I actually think No Surrender, No Retreat is a better episode. So oh. it's tied four to four. Okay, this is it. This is where we all the thumbs either come I'll out put or my thumb. stay home. Thumb uh, it, one? baby. Um, oh, No which, Surrender, which No Retreat. <laughs> Are you going to tell me which one you're thumbing? Sorry. I'm thumbing No Surrender, No Retreat. Endgame. Okay. Endgame. God okay, damn it, you two. Thumbs for Endgame. I still have one left. Thumb. You do, and I do too. Go ahead, Emily. Surrender. 
and I'm going to do no surrender. And that means <laughs> no surrender. Um. This is what happens when you waste your thumbs. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Woo. No surrender, no retreat is our vote for the best episode of season four. Now, real quick. Let's take, little, let's take a little jaunt over to the Twitter verse and see what everyone else voted Must for. Must we? Yeah, I'm yeah, dying to see must. what Twitter chose, to be honest. Okay, I've been wanting to know, so, and I haven't peeked. To the cesspool of the internet we go. <laughs> Actually, hold on. Let me do it this way, because I want to see back in No, no, that would be Truth Social. Mm. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> That's wah, wah, in the cesspool. Wah, yeah. Please hold. I got this. That's financial fraud and a cesspool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, so I'm glad. Yeah. You don't want to. Um, I was going to save my thumb to vote for Severed Dreams uh, so that that would win from last season, but alas, I used okay. it. Okay, so here we go. Uh, <laughs> we had uh, number 17 was Rumors, uh, 16 was Epiphanies. We voted for Rumors. Twitter voted for Rumors, 28 to 22. Uh, we did Racing Mars, 5 to 3, and Twitter did The Summoning, 22 to 12. Uh, we did exercise five to four against conflicts and Twitter voted exercise as well. Uh, they did intersections 26 to seven against atonement because they have better taste. And we did five to four atonement and they did moments of transition at 26 with uh, against illusions of truth at seven. And we voted moments of transition as well too. And they voted deconstruction of falling stars 29 to 14 where we uh, obviously shat the bed. Okay. Uh, Proving that Twitter is a cesspool. So you're trying to say that our fans on the Twitter account are cesspool members? Because I don't think so. I'm (laughs) trying to say that we, as in me and Kevin, have better taste than whoever the fuck is voting (laughs) Excellent. Excellent. Well said, Jesse. (laughs) Okay. So we voted into the fire against rumors. And uh, Twitter uh, did the same. 68 to 8. That was a hard fought fight. Uh, they did Between the Darkness 23 against Long Night 20, and we did the same. Uh, they did Racy Mars over to Whatever Happened to Mr. Garibaldi, and we actually had uh, uh, the, the Racy Mars did not make it in the Twitter account, so that was uh, 25 to 18. The summoning moved on. Uh, exercise of vile powers lost to no surrender, no retreat 49 to 5, and obviously we swept it as well. And then we have the face of the enemy on ours beat atonement. And over there, intersection continued to roll 59 to 36 against face of the enemy. And then they voted moments of transition over rising star 32 to 26. Whereas in we voted over it five to four. And then they voted falling towards apotheosis 42 to 15. Whereas in we did uh, it five to three. And then we voted in game over lines of communication, and uh, in game did beat con- deconstruction 54 to 16. Moving right along to the Elite Eight, Into the Fire beat Between the Darkness and the Light 63 to 17. Whereas in for us, it was uh, Between the Darkness and the Light beat Into the Fire 5 to 3. So we really just jacked up our bracket a lot. Uh, No Surrender, No Retreat beat the Summoning. And over here, it was No Surrender beat Racing Mars. And then we had an R1, Moments of Transition beat Face of the Enemy. And over here, it was Intersections Continue to Roll, 33 against Moments of Transition, 26. Endgame kicked uh, Falling Towards Apotheosis' ass. And uh, it did the same for us. Now we're over here. Endgame went up against Moments of Truth on ours. And it went against Falling Towards Apotheosis on that one. And it did the same thing. And then we had Moments of Transition and Intersection. And you know what? Intersection continued to roll. It beat Moments of Transition. Because, again, the folks on Twitter understand a good episode when they see it. And then No (laughs) Surrender beat The Summoning. And Into the Fire beat Between the Darkness and the Light. Which on, on ours we had between the darkness beating into the fire. So there we had uh, no surrender, no retreat and between the darkness and the light in our final four and Twitter had uh, no surrender, no retreat beating into the fire in their final four. And then we had intersections finally lost to end game. Whereas of course we just had end game lose to moments of transition. And finally 
the championship round for us was in-game versus no surrender with no surrender winning. And over on in, uh, Twitter, it was in-game versus no surrender. And in-game won. So at the very end, uh, it came down to the same two. But there was a lot more shenanigans in there uh, throughout. So that's the bracket, folks. That was fun. <laughs> I, I actually always enjoy the bracket. It's always a fun time. <laughs> Maybe I'm the only person. At your, uh, <laughs> Atragon says, I hang out on Twitter so you don't have to. <laughs> so we've got a few minutes here, guys. And what I want to do now is I want to ask you all if uh, there you are, Justin. Hi. And I want to ask you all uh, what your predictions are. So the newbies, what your predictions are for season five. And then if we got a little bit of time. We'll do some questions from the chat as well, too. Uh, but let's get our predictions out of the way uh let's go to nicole what do you predict will happen in season five i honestly have no fucking clue <laughs> um i definitely think that we'll see another conflict of sorts um obviously because they have a whole nother season so they got to have some shit go down um i'm interested to see how far along it will get us like if it's just going to be a year or if we'll see like when we get to the end are we going to know kind of what happens to them and, and stuff like that um but yeah i don't know I, I i honestly i have no idea what to expect i mean i obviously besides marcus the gang's all back together on b5 which makes me happy um and i'm just interested to see how the dynamics continue after you know what happened with garibaldi and sheridan and um, just interested to see how, you know, the characters develop along this, this, ep this season, if I can speak, sorry. Um, but I predict there'll be some bumps in the road. Um, but really I, I, I honestly have no idea what to expect and I'm like dying to know what's going to happen. So let's go over to, <laughs> this should be fun. Emily, what are your predictions for season five? <laughs> I honestly do not know. I'm not sure where it's going to go after season four. Um, but if, like, based on, I don't know if they're going to go, like, farther in the future. Because there was mention of Dylan and Sheridan having a kid, which, eh. um, But if we stick within, like, another year's time frame, like they have been doing so far, I predict there's going to be more issues on Earth because I don't think people are going to be happy about that transition government after Clark offed himself. Jesse, what do you think is going to happen with season five? Dude, I have no clue. I honestly, and I don't know everybody else has said it, but I have no idea where we go from here. So um, I'm just, I know, my prediction is that there's going to be change and I'm going to be very uncomfortable with it. And I'll probably hate that person for the first half of the season. So that's my <laughs> prediction. Oh, we have a little bit longer to go before we'll see if that prediction comes true. Justin, what do you think? What are you thinking for season five predictions? Yeah. I mean, we already kind of got a little bit of a taste of what's coming in the future. Like we have the telepath war and, Maybe we'll see something of what they also mentioned, what the Drazi war or something like that. There was a lot. Of stuff, um, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of things I may be, you know, that may be coming down the turnpike here, but I'm also very interested to see what happens on earth and how that all kind of resolves itself. If this uh, new bad boss president, you know, can get anything done. But then also we're going to have to see a resolution with Londo becoming emperor on on centauri prime so very interested to see how that turns out and see if the uh the the premolitions of uh jakar choking londo to death comes actually happens so okay so first ones i got something fun for us here i think we'll see how, how fun it is i want to know from each first one who do you think's gonna like season five the most don't say why just who do you think is going to like season five the most? And who do you think is going to hate season five the That's most? That's interesting. Good one. Let's go, uh, let's go to Blake first. Who is going to love season five? And who is going to hate season five? And again, those in the chat, please be careful. Uh, no one, the newbies haven't watched season five. But you tell us too. Who do you think is going to love season five? And who do you think is going to hate season five? Blake. 
I think Emily's going to absolutely love season five. She's just going to think it's fantastic. Why do I feel like that's just dripping with sarcasm? <laughs> Ryan has oh, been calling out in the chat you. all night. <laughs> He's been like, she's going to love it. It's going to be great. <laughs> I actually think Justin's going to like season five. I, I think okay. there's going to be some stuff in there Justin's going to like with that. Um, Emily is going to hate it. I, no, I, I can see that. Okay, so Mike, who do you think is going to love season five and who's going to hate season five? Um, hmm. I don't want to be a pylon, but like, well, I think Justin will enjoy it. And actually, I, th I think Jesse's going to hate it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah. Wait. Gustavo just said in the chat, Jesse, calm down. We don't want to lose you halfway through season five. <laughs> oh, shit. Is there time loops in season five? Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin, what do you think? I think that Emily will not like season five. <laughs> I think that Jesse won't like season five early on. And then by middle to end, I think she'll end up liking it. Okay. Is this going to be another Ivanova situation? Yeah, it is. Yes, Justin. <laughs> it's another Ivanova situation. We're not going to tell. Uh, for me, hold on. Ahead. I haven't finished. Uh, I think it. I think Nicole um, will... I, I don't think she's going to hate anything, but... Um, I, I think I think she'll I think she'll like it, and I and I I think that Justin will like it, although not as much as other seasons. Um, for me, I I honestly think that Nicole will like season five the most for the reason why many people in the fandom hate season five, and I'll just oh boy, it. I think actually, and this is not like you're contrarian. I just think the storyline is something that's right up your alley. So I think oh, we're going to have a lot of people fucking. Yes. Happy and romantic. <laughs> yes. Everyone in the chat saying I like it too. So I'm here for it. <laughs> there will be people sparkling, Nicole. Fuck us sideways. I hope not. In terms of who will hate it the most, man, Emily, I, I, I have hope for you. I think we can get there at the, uh, at least by the end of this show, I think we'll get you there. But Man, it was a rough season four, so I'm just going to play the odds and assume that you're going to hate season five. <laughs> okay, that makes me really concerned. That's going to focus on, like, Delin and Sheridan and their relationship, and I'm going to be, like, gagging every mm -hmm. episode and, you know, not in a good way, so. I, I think Rufus says it best. I just hope someone likes season five. Yeah. There are some great <laughs> episodes more towards the end of the season. That's, I feel the same way. I, I've said this from the beginning. Season one and season five are the ones that I don't usually watch all the way through. So this will be my first time watching season five all the way through since I truly think 1998. Uh, but season one really surprised me. So we'll see what season five does for these guys as well, too. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and we're going to wrap up the show, but then we'll stick around. At least some of us will to do Q and a with the chat for those who stuck with us in the live, but a couple reminders uh, next week. We will be taking a little bit of a transition, not to season five, but we're going to be watching the TNT movie in the beginning. So we'll be reviewing in the beginning next week, and then we'll dive into season five the week after. A reminder that we do have the two giveaways going. So if you really want some of these lovely, and these are actually really cool. I love the old boxes of software. If you, cool. oh, I just freaked out my camera. If you want either the official guide to Babylon 5 or the uh, arcade series Shadow Wars, both ready to run on your Windows 95 system. Uh, you need to leave a review on Apple or uh, uh, hit the subscribe button. And those of you who may be watching this right now on our live who haven't subscribed, click that button just like you need to click that like button too. And uh, then finally, as uh, Blake was showing off his new toy, we'll put a link uh, for that person uh, down in the uh, show notes because we want to give him some business as well, too, because he did a fine job on that PPG. And uh, we will again be back next week. But please be sure to like, subscribe, follow. And a big thank you to our Patreon members who are also chatting in our Discord. And a thank absolute you. huge thank you to our, Grace, our Gray Council members who are the producers who are listed down below uh and uh yeah and the one other thing i want to throw out here 
I, I, I'm not guaranteeing this, but I'm very, very close to confirming it, is by the time we get through season five, uh, I have purchased through Patreon, our, our, your support there, I have purchased the rights to show the last two episodes of Babylon 5 on a movie theater screen. And I am working with a certain movie theater to uh, get that done. So with all hmm. things being hopeful, crossing the fingers, uh, we may be able to invite some of all you as well too to watch the last two episodes of Babylon 5 on the big screen. So again, that's a big help for, uh, support from our Patreon members who are, are able to do that. And uh, we'll figure it out. We got about uh, four months to figure it out. So it's going to be fun. Uh, until next week, when we talk about In the Beginning, I've been Scott and with me has been... Jesse. Nicole. She's first. <laughs> Emily. Justin. Mike. Jim Jim Bob. Chinchilla. You're not Jim Boy. Hey Blake, say say Blake. 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 <laughs> Behind the scenes, we usually have a list that people just read off of, but we're live, so fuck it. <laughs> have a good night, everybody. Yeah, why be organized? Hey, why okay. be organized? And Ryan has will... a question. Okay, one second, and uh, well, screw it. Okay, let's move over to our chat questions now, because uh, why not? <laughs> uh, Let's do it. Ryan says, I thought Scott got the rights to Hypernauts. No, <laughs> although that'd be kind of fun. I bet they'll be cheaper than what I got for the other ones. Uh, let's see, where was Ryan's question? Oh, my question. My biggest question is for Jesse. What are your thoughts on Lita now? You started out the season saying you didn't like her or trust her. Um, I actually feel sorry for her a little bit. I'm not, she's not my favorite. Um, I don't not like her. I just, she's fine. <laughs> she's she's just she's just not my I don't know she's not my favorite character so um she's I don't really have an opinion of her like during the during the cash things where like he took all over her, her like furniture and stuff like that I started to feel sorry for her and she did a lot of cool things for the you know for the station throughout the series so I mean or throughout the season so I mean she's she's fine she's just not my she's not my favorite she's not my least favorite though either so Atragon says, good thing that HD upscale happened. Yes, the, the rights I have already purchased are for the high definition versions. So, yes. Uh, Ryan says, Jesse, she helped win both wars and gets jack shit in return. Uh, not my love, Ryan. She does not earn my love. So but She got a pizza from Zach. Yeah, she's fine. I, her eyes... Listen, there. If there's ever a chance that we're gonna interview her, I'm gonna be very nice because she seems like a very nice lady. But her eyes creep me out. They're so dark that you know how when she does her thing, sometimes they're actually black, and then other times it's her actual eyes. I can't tell the difference. I don't know if she's <laughs> me or if I always feel like she's always got black eyes, but they kind of creep me out a little bit. So uh, this one will do rapid fire. I'll call you out and you just tell me what you're thinking so far. So Rufus asks, if you were to choose one character of B5, who would you choose as your favorite so far? Nicole. Fuck, I knew you were going to ask me first. Uh, it's a really, really close tie between Garibaldi and Ivanova. Okay, so Nicole, remember what I said? Which one character? All right, all right, choose? Ivanova, Ivanova. Okay, there you go. Mm, Justin. It used to be Kosh, but I think I'm more on the Londo bandwagon now. I can see that. I can see that. Jesse. Lita. Um <laughs> I actually love Lita. Lita. No. Um, I can't say I can't say I fucking Ivanova, which just listen, I went back and listened to the first episode the other day and it was rough, but I think she's my favorite. Emily. It started out as Dylan, but honestly, Jakar's growing on me. Mm -hmm. yes. I like him too a lot. Kevin. Marcus. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just as a side note, we, we all predicted that Jesse would, would end up liking Ivanova the most. We all predicted that. We talked yes. about that in a Beyond the Room a couple of different times. Because she is Ivanova. One. Right. <laughs> right. Um, 
But anyhow, Marcus is just, he's just a, uh, an awesome dude. And, you know, now that you've seen um, the the story arc with him, you, you understand how how powerful his storyline is and uh, just uh, how great a guy he is. And, yeah, I really like the stuff with, with Franklin. Um, you know, we've dogged Franklin a lot on this show, and there's a lot of reasons why we've done that. Uh, but you you got to admit that uh, when the two of them are doing a, a buddy comedy that it's uh, really good TV. Mike? Uh, Zathras? Uh <laughs> Which Not one? Zathras or Zathras, but Zathras. I was going to say, which Zathras? Yeah. Um, no, it's Jakar. It's always been Jakar. It'll always be Jakar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blake? Jakar. Yeah, I I came in saying this is uh, Londo's story with Jakar right there with him. And uh, just because of the uh, what what Jakar's arc is, I, I, I would have to say Jakar after watching through again. Uh which actually brings us to another one from Ryan. Uh, is Londo redeemed for you now? Are we are we to redemption? Justin, you've been talking about this a lot, so let's start with you. Yeah, I mean, I was really unsure if Londo would actually ever be redeemed, but I think at this point, where we are right now in the show, I feel like Londo has taken a lot of good good steps to redeem himself and to try and do the right thing. Now, going forward, if we do end up with Londo as Emperor now, I don't know what kind of errors or mistakes he'll make in the future, but, you know, he may go again down the dark path. But I really think that right now, from what I've seen so far, I think Londo has gone a long way to coming back. Any other other newbies want to chime in on that? I I also oh go ahead Jesse no go ahead you're good I was gonna say I think uh, he's definitely on the road to redemption um, you know I think him and Jakar are working together and their dynamic has changed uh, I mean obviously it's not gonna right the wrongs that he's done you know what I mean but I definitely don't think he's a total douchebag anymore Blake just put in the chat too but he's got to run because. Billy Joel is more important than Babylon 5, which I don't necessarily disagree with. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm going to go watch the uh, Billy Joel from Madison Square Garden concert, and y'all have a great night. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Any other newbies Beauty. want to chime in on that? I would say no. I it, It's a no for me. And you guys are, like, way more forgiving and, and kind-hearted than I am. Because that motherfucker killed millions of people. And most of Jakar's family. So... I, it's it's a no for me. I don't care how nice he is. I don't care how cute he is and how funny he is. It, it's a no. Yeah. I just... Given what he's done, I don't know. I'm glad to see he hasn't stayed on that path. I'm glad right. he seems to have gotten off that path. But I struggle with, can you actually be redeemed after, you know, mass murder and right. genocide? Well, it looks like a couple of our other folks are going to be dropping off here soon. So we'll go ahead and end it there. Thanks so much, guys, for joining with us. This was a great conversation. I love that you all had fun with the polls as well, too. And stick with us because uh, we've got some more surprises up ahead and we've got a lot of good stuff to come. And uh, we're, we're coming to the finish line. Uh, we're looking at October as when we'll get to the end of season five. So we're getting there. But thanks, everybody. We mm -hmm. really do appreciate it. And uh We'll talk to you all again soon. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs>